just a week ago, Anthropic released their new model, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. And 3.5 Sonnet actually outperforms all the cloud models like Opus and 3 Sonnet as well as Heiko. But that's not actually what we're here for today. Now, if you scroll down a bit, all the way to the bottom, you can see these artifacts. Now, what is Cloud Artifact? This is a new feature that Cloud just released in which you can actually interact with your model through chat and also run the code inside the browser as well as the preview will be shown inside the same browser which means you don't have to go to any IDE. You can actually do everything inside the browser and create apps and front end and whatnot using their Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use an open source GitHub repo which is this OZ Grozer's chat GPT artifacts and of course all the credit goes to OZ Grozer because they put in all the effort for creating this amazing application for us to actually use for free and open source. You can see that it is actually Claude's Artifacts clone and as it is open source you can use this for free. Now the usage is really simple. All you have to do is just clone their GitHub repo, install the dependencies and then just add a few configuration inside the env file and start your application. But in today's video, we're actually going to use everything open source, which means we're not going to use the API of any OpenAI's model. We're actually going to go and download Olama and then run a local model on our machine, which is going to be DeepSeq Coder V2, which just got released recently. And it is an amazing open source model for coding. So that was all the explanation about what we're going to do today. So let's move to the lab now. Hi, this is your host Shamrez with Skill Curve. And without further ado, let's start the lab. Now, first of all, we need to clone the Git repo in our machine. So I'm going to go and do that. For that, you will have to make sure that you have Git installed on your PC. So I'm going to go and say Git, the version that it has. So let's go and see whether your machine has Git or not. As you can see, Git is locally installed on my machine. But don't worry, if you don't have Git installed on your PC, you can use any package manager. I prefer NPM. So you're going to go and say NPM I and then pass on the G flag. This is going to make sure that Git is installed globally on your machine. And then let's go and just type Git. This way you can install Git globally on your machine. But I'm going to skip this step because I already have it installed. Once you have Git installed, you're going to go and say Git clone. And then you will have to paste in the repo here. For that, let's go to GitHub. And from OZ Gross's chat GPT artifacts, all we have to do is just click on code here and then copy this link. Once done, let's go back to our terminal. Now let's paste that link here and hit enter. And there you go, your chat GPT artifacts repo is cloned locally on your machine. Now to run this application, we will have to move to the directory. So I'm going to go and say CD chat GPT artifacts and hit enter. Now once you're there, you can either open this inside VS code or any of your preferred IDE. So I'm going to go with VS code. As you can see, we have the whole project of chat GPT artifacts inside our VS code. Now you can either install all the packages using the VS code embedded terminal, or you can use your traditional terminal because I'm a fan of traditional terminal. So I'm going to go and use this and the simple command to install all the packages inside the package.json file is npm install, and this will install all the dependencies for you. Let's go and hit enter. And there you go. Now all the dependencies are installed. Now you can proceed with starting your application. For that, you're going to go and say npm run dev and this is going to open up your application on a local port inside your browser. So let's go and hit enter. As you can see that our chat GPT artifacts is being hosted on localhost 3000. So I'm going to go to localhost 3000 here and there you go. Now your chat GPT artifacts is up and running. Now you will have to do a few changes to actually make this work. For that, let's go to our VS code. And let's say if you're working with OpenAI models, all you have to do is go to the env file here and you will have to insert your OpenAI key right here. And this way you can use your OpenAI model at the back end to use this app. And one more thing that you need to do is change the name of this env file from env.example to just env and just remove the example part here. And that's all. But as I am a fan of freemium, open source and local models, I'm going to go and work with a local model running on my machine using Olama. So for that, first off, let's go and install Olama on my machine. Let's copy the Olama download script from their website. Let's go back to my terminal. I'm going to paste in the script here. Let's go and hit enter. Once it's done downloading, let's go to the models page. And the model that I'm going to use is the DeepSeq Coder V2 that just got released. So I'm going to go and download this model. 
let's go and download the 16b version and let's copy this snippet from here let's go back to our terminal i'm gonna go and paste that here so your model is being downloaded and there you go your model is successfully installed on your local machine let's go and check out the response so i'm gonna go and say hello and hit enter and as you can see the model is actually working now that you're done with your model let's go back to our app and make a few changes to embed olama inside ChatGPT artifacts so here inside your vs code go to the pages folder and go to the apis folder here and inside the chat.js file we need to make a few changes the first change is going to be adding the base url here so i'm gonna go and say base url and then i'm going to go and assign it a value which is going to be the localhost url of olama so i'm gonna go and say http localhost 11434 slash v1 once you're done with that let's go to the modal section here and because i'm using deep seek coder v2 i'm gonna go and name this as deep seek coder v2 once you're done with these changes let's go and save this file and now let's go and run our app again and check out the results so let's go and say create a sign up login form and hit enter and there you go the results are out and as you can see it made a react component using jsx and css here you can actually preview your login and sign up form which is quite good i would say now you can even switch to sign up so let's go and try that out it can actually switch from login to sign up and there are even validations like please fill out this field which is really great and all we did is enter a five word national language prompt which is just mind blowing but that was just a start of text to front end let's go and create more cool projects with this so i'm going to go and say create a working chat interface let's go and hit enter and there you go within a couple of seconds it made the react component as well as the css styling and here is the preview now we can actually enter messages here so i'm going to go and say hey there let's go and send this message and it's popping up here which is really good let's go and send another message so it's gonna be this is skill curve let's hit enter and it's actually working although the front end is not that specific because we just used a really short natural language prompt which stated that create a working chat interface we didn't specify the chat interface should be like this or it should have this specific design so that way it designed and created this really plain and simple chat interface but you can actually work on your prompting and create a full-fledged front end for your chat interface but that's it for this now let's actually go and create something else as for the next example i'm going to create a website landing page so i'm going to go and say create a website landing page let's go and hit enter and there you go you have the results out let's go and preview it and this is the landing page that it actually created you can fit your website's logo here you can fit a background according to your theme here as well as it added all the basic links the home about service and the contact link and there's even the feature section where you can add your features and a get started button i think this is really good for a tiny prompt just like this one here and it did this in a couple of seconds and you can actually preview all of your content inside the browser which is just mind blowing again and again the power of ai just blows my mind with the passage of time ai is improving a lot and i'm really excited for the future now for the last project i'm going to go and create a to-do list app so let's see how good it codes a to-do list app so i'm gonna go and say create a working to-do list app and hit enter there you go the code is here it even explains what is included in this simple to-do list application there's add a new to-do item there's toggle to-do item between completed and not completed by clicking on it and there's delete a to-do item so this is pretty much the core concept of any to-do list app so let's go and actually see the design did a really simple and clean design for a to-do list app i'm gonna go and add something to the list like running in the morning let's go and add that as you can see it's actually here what if i want to add multiple to do's to the list so let's go and say get together at skill curve let's add that here and what if i want to mark this done so let's go and click on it and this will mark this as done which is really good and if i want to delete this all i have to do is just click on this delete here which is really amazing we created this to do list app within a couple of seconds and with just a six word natural language prompt which is just mind blowing so this was chat gpt artifacts an amazing open source clone for the clothes artifact and of course even though the repo is public all the credit goes to ozgrozer 
who actually coded this chat GPT artifacts and made it possible that we can use this service for free and open source. And that wraps up our video for today. I hope this video was valuable. If you found this video insightful, hit that like button. Share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Ring that notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video where we continue to curb your skills with the latest tech. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.